Welcome to St. Patrick's Online and our celebration of the second Sunday of Easter. We bring the intentions of those people who've asked us to pray for them in the prayer bowl they represented and you may have your own intentions but please don't hesitate to let them be known to us. I'd also like to mention that one of the joys of this Easter is the contact I've had with our Anglican brothers and sisters through the pastor of St. Philip's, Justin Moffat and I have exchanged um, delightful text messages. So let us remember as we celebrate the Easter mysteries, the, the worldwide church of believers, those who believe that Jesus is the risen Lord. And this Sunday we focus particularly on mercy, the theme of mercy. God's mercy is everlasting. God's mercy will never abandon us. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Spirit. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us remember the mercy of God and our need for that mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindles the faith of the people you have made your own, increase the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
His love is everlasting. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Give thanks, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was thrust, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my savior. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoiled or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heaven. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears the testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honour. You will not see him, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me. Happy those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. And he said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, we've seen the Lord, he answered, unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. 
Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here, look, here are my hands. Give me your hand and put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our Gospel today is taken from the last words of John's Gospel. Chapter 20, verses 13 through 31. I draw your attention to that because I'm going to come back. It's an important fact. You would also be aware that there is a chapter 21 of John's Gospel, but scholars remind us that that was added later. It doesn't mean it's less important. It's just been added. The Gospel concludes nicely at this point, as it were. Jesus comes amongst the disciples. They are absolutely devastated, desolate. He breathes peace into their hearts. He invites them, and this is significant, from their place of desolation and disarray, go forth. Bear witness to me. Bear witness to the reconciliation, the forgiveness that is my gift to the world. Now Thomas is missing. And I feel very so sorry for Thomas because he characterises the doubter from this. And I suppose there's good reason for that. But let me invite you to think of another possibility here. Thomas is chosen by John to bear witness to what matters most in John's Gospel. Before I pursue that further, we go back to chapter 14 of John's Gospel and it's, John, it's Thomas that asks Jesus, how do we know the way? And there's something crucial about that question. Thomas, I'm suggesting to you, is a very, very crucial person, apostle amongst these people. So back to this moment where Thomas says, I won't believe unless I see. Now, the event is this. Thomas gets to bear witness to the wounds. None of the others point to the wounds. Thomas actually puts his hand inside the gaping wound of Jesus' side. The glory of God is manifest in and through the cross. This utterly shattered human being, this frail human being, the last time they saw him, he was a corpse. This is our God. Our God who is eternal, who is finite. Our God who is vulnerable. Our English word vulnerable comes from the Latin word vulnus, meaning a wound. I mentioned a moment ago that these are the last words of John's Gospel. Listen to the first words of John's Gospel from the so-called prologue. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it. The eternal word is the risen Lord. They are one and the same. In his being, Jesus combines Godhead and the fullness of humanity. Here's something to think about. Is it possible that maybe in our vulnerability, our own woundedness, as church, as individuals, as community, as family, as people living amidst the change structures that the coronavirus has thrust upon us. There's a vulnerability about that. Is it possible that the way we bear our woundedness and our vulnerability is a way of bearing witness, of proclaiming the good news? That there is something very, very precious happening here in and through our vulnerability. Let us take a moment to reflect, give our minds and hearts to God, and think of the woundedness of our world, the woundedness of your own life and those around you how God may be given glory, yes, even in that. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. He humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Through to the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Be God Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of all my sins. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. Accept, O Lord, the oblations of your people that, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain, attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. 
at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together at the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church. Spread throughout the world. Make us grow in love. Together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, and all those who minister your gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Mary MacKillop, and all the saints who've done your will throughout the ages, we may become co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom in the words that Jesus has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith and your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Grant, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Before our final blessing, please join me in the Maris prayer given us by our Superior General, invited to pray for all people as we suffer under the stresses of the coronavirus. Healing Lord, we pray through the intercession of our founder, Father Jean-Claude Collin, and Mary, Mother of Mercy, for all people affected by the, new, the corona virus, that everyone may know your love and protection. We pray for all Maris throughout the world, especially for our senior and vulnerable brothers and sisters. May we know your special protection and care. We also pray for all those with whom we share the work of Mary and for all whom we serve in our different ministries. May all people experience your healing and protective grace in all that is happening among us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.